so, so yeah, so we're working through chapter 14 of uh, the book JavaScript for R. This is um, it, the section of the book is about um, about how you integrate your uh, you, you know um, JavaScript and Shiny basically how you write uh, code that takes advantage of some of the efficiencies that JavaScript can bring when you're writing Shiny apps and things like that. Um, the chapter is called custom outputs. So this is like um, defining how you'd do something equivalent to like a render plot and a plot output function. So you um, you are defining some entity within Shiny that will present data to um, the user of the app um i'll admit i i i i've only really got through like the first half of this chapter the 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 second half has got quite a bit of stuff uh, which means that we don't get a full picture of what's actually going in in this chapter the stuff i'm going to present today um so uh if i just share my screen um one of the many screens this one Okay, hopefully you can all see that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the, there's a few kind of learning objectives with this chapter. Um, so you will learn how to define um, a, a render function and an output function um, for whatever... Um, thing you're developing for, for use within shiny um we're also going to kind of describe the purpose of these two types of function in a bit more detail and explain how uh you can write javascript code that will um uh, allow you to 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 bind your um, you know, your work in progress to a shiny um, output um, entity. So when you're working in shiny, you'd write, um, so do I have an example shiny app here? Um, no. Um, so you'd have loads of things. So typically in shiny, you'd have um, uh, an output list that might contain my plot or something like that, uh, into which you render plot or something like that. That would be housed within the server code for a shiny app, and there would be a, a an equivalent bit of code in the UI side of a shiny app that would do something along the lines of um, d -d 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 plot output of my plot. And what that would do is it would inject some HTML into the UI for your shiny app. When your app is running, what will happen is the um, contents of this variable will get bound and presented by the HTML elements set up by this thing in the, the UI code. Um, so we're kind of explaining how if you've got some um, kind of if you've got some JavaScript code that you want to uh, use within the Shiny app, how to bind that JavaScript object to a shiny output element like this so that it can be um, rendered and then displayed uh, by an app. Um, another thing that I'm, I'm not going to talk about this week, so we're going to split this chapter over two weeks if that's okay, be just so that it's feasible to do the, the amount of content in, in um, 
a, a sensible amount of time. Um, there's a section towards the end of this chapter about how to kind of conditionally load JavaScript dependencies. So that might be um, the, the the example here. There's a kind of you're generating like an animated box that will flash up to the user. If you don't want that to, if for some reason, say, I don't know, I mean, I imagine if you're working in a low bandwidth setting or something like that, you might not want to download that additional dependency and use the additional, like, um, Um, kind of graphics requirements or whatever on 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 someone's system. So you might write your code such that in some settings the dependency is downloaded and in other settings it isn't. Um, anyway, there's quite a bit about kind of dependency loading in this. Right. So um, we're going to talk about the nuts and bolts of shiny though for quite a bit um right so yes so what we're doing in this um chapter if i find the book for a second is we are trying to um create so i figure out what goes on here yeah so right i'll show you so this is um, we're trying to make a shiny app that displays a in a it, it kind of a kind of pop up window um, that where the user can specify what color and what um, uh, title should be presented and things like that within this um, pop up window thing. Um, so this is something that, you know, this is like an extension to Shiny that you're writing and you need to write it in such a way that it can um, be used by a Shiny developer um, and, and as such, you, you know, so this is an output element. It's just going to print some content to the screen um, and then yeah so you're going to define a function that can um, create you know all the kind of data structures required for this um, element to show up you're then going to call define a function that creates the the R objects and the images and things that need to be sent to the browser to um, you know to display this um, uh, pop up and you're also going to define a function that um, defines the HTML scaffold within which this um, pop-up element will be placed in your, you know, in the, the, the DOM effectively. Um, so yeah, so there's, so the, the example is called Boxy and basically it's just a, a kind of box that shows up and it's, you know, it can be animated and show a, a, a kind of message to the user. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a working version of it yet. Um, but uh, but I will by next week. Um, so anyway, um, so the the way it works in the in the book is not how I'm going to present this. So in the book, you're writing an app as a standalone app, and the um, the functions to do um, the oh, where did I put it? And these functions are defined within an app.r file uh, towards the end of this chapter. 
Um, that's not how I'm going to do it because were I to have done it that way, I would have kind of missed out on the things that would make this chapter usable for me professionally. Um, so rather than do that, I've tried to build a package that contains the relevant functions such that they can be used in, you know, by any app developer that, as, as they so wish, rather than, because there's a slightly different structure to a package versus a kind of single file app. Um, okay, so uh, I'll pull that back over here. Right, so, so I did a kind of, um, a little bit of work on this over the weekend. Um, so if I get the package skeleton up. Right. Um, right, so what I did initially was I started an R package so there's some code in here in, in the, the notes for the the book club um, where I've basically created a package to contain the, the, the kind of shiny extension for this boxy thing. Um, I've added some dependencies and added some license things so that things like R command check and, and that pass. So I've, I've got to a point where this is like a um, valid R package. Um, I added various other little tools. So I've got like a, a kind of typical git ignore file for R. Um, I've got a little function that will run example apps. So I'll show you that. Um, so this is it's just code that I've copied off the internet, basically. What it will do is I can write my package code in this R directory here. Um, and um, while I'm working on that package, I can embed example apps within this directory here, um, which will help me to kind of demonstrate how how to use the package if you're a shiny developer. Um, so this function here, all that will do is it will find a directory given by a, 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 the, the user argument here and then run whatever app it finds in that directory. Um, okay, so, right, so that is Okay, so I added, I don't think I added much code to this though. Um, so if I look in, in stuff, I've got a shiny examples thing. Yeah, I haven't written the code yet. Um, but that's fine because we can just take the code from the book. So I want this app here to run given functions that I'll end up writing as part of, um, of, 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 of working through this chapter. Um, if I try it, it'll probably fail spectacularly because it can't find the relevant functions. So the UI is built first and at present I haven't defined this function and I haven't defined this function, I haven't defined this function. Right, so um, what do I need to do? Um, in order to do this, uh, there's a dependency uh, called countup.js, and um, that provides like a kind of animated counter. Um, where is it? Here. Yeah. So it kind of looks like this. Um, if we reload that again, it will kind of animate up to whatever the count is. Um, and we're going to use this kind of um, animation 
thing within our app. So there's a dependency, and um, in order to um, to get that in place, I added um, an assets directory within this um, app where I downloaded the countup JavaScript and I've added this binding JavaScript thing. Um, the binding.js is going to be used to contain any custom JavaScript that is required by the package we're developing to link, you know, the uh, you know count up JS and the various other parts of, of the custom JavaScript that we're writing to the shiny app. Um, okay, and there's a, a styles.css that we're going to write as well. So binding and styles are custom files that we're going to uh, work on. Um, count up is a dependency that we've downloaded from elsewhere. Right. Um, and after setting up that, the um, package looks like this. So we've got, you know, typical R package related files. Um, we've got the little function that I added to run the example shiny apps and in this, in the inst directory, we've got the assets that the um, kind of shiny extension that we're writing will require in order to run. And if I'm kind of trying to build up a, a, a shiny example as we go, right? So, um, so that's that, right? If I look at um, our skeleton, right? So, um, our side skeleton box, right? Um, so, so the first thing we want to do is define these kind of the, the functions that Shiny will need in order to use that, the, the, you know, whatever code we write. So, we're going to define an output function for use by the UI. We're going to define a render function for use in the server. And we're going to define this function that will just kind of define the, the, the data that's required by the, um, the, the JavaScript that we're going to write. Um, Okay, well, what's this? How's this work? Um, yeah, so so we're writing three R functions, and in addition, we're going to have to write some JavaScript code to define how the, you know what the box will look like and stuff like that, and to bind it to Shiny. Um, da, da, da. The functions that we're writing will typically be called like this. So in the UI, you've got an element that looks like that. So the boxy output. In the server, you have code that looks like this. So some output element gets the you know the the, the results of running render boxy attached to it. Um, okay, so so what I've done is I've defined a file in the R directory here. If I check out okay. Um, so what I've done now is I've got this file. And all it is is like the absolute basics of what we need. So this is the thing that defines the HTML. And I've just, uh, at present, all it does is define a, a div with a particular identifier. The render function, these, um, the, you know, render plot and render whatever, they all return a function which is ultimately evaluated by Shiny. Um, so 
they don't actually they don't return a kind of you know one of your more typical objects a list of something or a data frame or something what they return is a function that is subsequently evaluated in so it's it's kind of it's a function which is like an it, it's like bundled up with the environment within which it should be evaluated um okay so right so i've added that right so the skeleton for the r functions so all this is doing is the the user is going to be able to add um define a little box thing that has a title it has a value that's displayed to the user and the, the kind of background of that box will be a you know a, a, a color um so all we've done here is write a little uh a little bit of art that wraps those values up in a list so that they can be used elsewhere um the output function creates an html skeleton at present it doesn't do a great deal so if we go over to r and do i have dev tools now Then if I do, let's see. Ugh. Right. All it does is create the HTML string with an ID that I've passed in. So in the book, these output functions all have um, a parameter called ID, which is kind of inconsistent with the um, parameter names used in other shiny output functions so i changed it to be an output id for consistency with like um, image output has an output id and plot output has an output id so rather than um, in the right where are we output r function yeah, so rather than this where, uh, oh, sorry, that's an example, but it's not quite right here. Um, this is the code that they suggested in the book. Um, and rather than ID, I changed that to output ID. Right. Um, right, so they're just the skeletons for what we're building. Right. Um, um the the boxy output thing um should return an html tag into which your you know upon which your rendered content will be displayed so this is the html tag within which the the box that we're creating will be attached um these kinds of functions, the output functions, they should return HTML tags, um, which should have either an ID attribute or a data input ID attribute. Now, that we're not going to talk about that today, but it is touched upon in the chapter what the difference between the two is. But the ID is effectively the same thing that you'd expect to see in a, if you looked at the HTML page, if you looked at the DOM, that's, you know, the, if you pass in an output ID of my plot, you'll end up with an HTML element with an ID attribute of my plot. Um, okay, so um, what else were we talking about here? Yes, um, so the output functions all they return something with either an ID tag or a data input, an ID attribute or a data input ID attribute, and they also define a class. And that class, um, the class on these elements is quite important for Shiny to be able to find relevant elements within the DOM when in a, in a later stage of this chapter. Um, so, whereas 
So this is our simplest kind of um, simplest output function that conforms to those standards. So we'd have um, a class called Boxy, um, which hopefully no one else would be developing in a shiny extension using that class name because you might get conflicts. But for, for now, we won't worry about that. Um, now, um, so the the purpose of this, we're trying to pass some data over into um, the app such that it can be displayed. Um, and the way we're going to display that is um, the the user is, sorry, where's that example code? Um, basically, the, the user is going to call this function here. And that creates an object that's got a title and a value and a color associated with it. That's going to go through some pipeline and ultimately get displayed attached to a, um, an HTML object generated by this function. So we have to kind of define how the title and the value and the color are going to be used. Um, at, you know, define appropriate HTML elements for displaying those title value etc elements um, so da, 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 um, so we expand upon that that function the output function to add a an h1 element that does this uh, and a paragraph element that does this and all that's doing is it's um, creating a um, a header that contains the that into which the value from this object is going to be displayed, and a paragraph into which the title from this element is going to be displayed. So if I move on to output with class. So this is what the code looks after that. Um, if I load that, I can now we see that we've got a header element nested inside and a paragraph element nested inside a div element. Um, so this is the kind of main class for the the, the kind of shiny extension that we're defining. This is the identifier. With, within that element, we've got uh, an identifier that kind of extended upon this with a kind of um, a kind of a, a bit of additional um, code. So um, so the the boxy value thing the value in here will ultimately be attached to this element and the title will ultimately be attached to this element when they are called from shiny um so yeah it's another kind of disp display of, of what that code should do um uh, in addition to um, shiny using the the class here to find elements that into which it's going to you know effectively inject um, values or images or whatever um, it also uses these classes to um, you, you can use them to style your content so um, here, so what we've done is I've added this styles for the app into a into the assets directory, um, and all that does is tell us how to style these various things. That's fine. Um, 
now um so what we do in here have i explained everything okay so um yeah so so that right we've we've just defined a, a css file it's in a subdirectory of my package when this package is in, installed on someone else's computer it will be in the asset slash styles.css in the installed package while i'm developing it's stored in in slash asset slash styles um, also we downloaded the count up javascript library and we've defined we are going to define uh, a file called binding.js that will link shiny to the you know the the, the dom um for this particular shiny extension right so we need to tell um for, for this output function to work and for it to have access to the relevant CSS files, and JavaScript files that it needs to work with Shiny, you have to attach those dependencies to the, um, the output of this function. Um, so they need to be attached to the DOM before anything, before this, you know, the, before this will be able to perform its job. Um, so we can attach them during the call to, to, to this output function. Um, what that will do is it will mean that, you know, upon building the UI in Shiny, um, this HTML dependency will be added to the, um, to the DOM for the app. Um, and the CSS file, the JavaScript files, will be added as like you know script entities or style sheet entities within the head for that um, the, the header for that for the relevant html um but quite reasonably the you know um it's quite possible that this output may never get called by a shiny app so the, you know if you've got a multi-page shiny app or something a lot of your users might not even go onto page three where there's a you know a, a heat map or something like that, that that needs to be displayed and if they're not going on to that um, page does it make sense to um, attach the you know the javascript libraries and things like that for, for that that they'll need for those kind of uh, for an interactive chart that they don't actually look at um here um during the building of the ui these dependencies will be in place uh, regardless of or not of whether the the the, the box is displayed within a, a particular user's session um there is a way of doing that more dynamically that the loading a bit more dynamically and, and and with a bit more kind of configuration and that but um so that's injecting the dependencies into the output function right um if you actually load this now uh, if i load this version of the oh sorry um so that's got the classes i need to add the dependencies which is okay so now um the only difference there's a there's a slight refactoring i've just kind of made the the different elements make the code look a bit less nested um but uh but otherwise it's identical to the previous version um from from here up um 
these dependencies are added here, and then you call HTML tools attach dependencies, and it will add this list of dependencies from this package to um, whichever Shiny app uses this output function. So that's like, so here, we're, because we're writing a package, we want to make sure that, you know, the assets within the, the package that we're writing are available to an app developer, um, you know, because I'm, I mean, I'm writing like example apps in this, but um, yeah, you just want to, you want to make sure that these assets are, are available to anyone who depends upon your the shiny extension that you're writing. And that's very similar to what was happening when we were working with HTML widgets. Um, so ensuring that the dependencies were in place was quite an important part of that. Um, and, um, and we use this HTML dependency function there as well to, to kind of ensure that, that things were um, attached when required. I've, quite interestingly, these shiny, um, the, the output function and the render function, you get one of the you get one of each of those for free when you write an HTML widget skeleton. So um, if I open um, um, I, during the HTML widgets part of this, um, um, where is it now? Of this book club, I wrote. Uh, a package, well, I basically copied a package out of the book um, that, um, that was for using this GIO visualization library. The scaffold that, um, that HTML widgets provides gives you these output and render functions um for free um so uh it, in this package the only thing that i added any content to was this function here html widgets itself when you call that create skeleton or whatever it was function added this output function and um this render function um so there are these are quite interesting functions to have a look at if 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 you find the content of this chapter a bit complicated. Um, anyway, um, right. So so we've added the dependencies here. Um, da, 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 da. Oh yes, in the book. They used, um, hold on, where was it? Um, there. So here, this is the equivalent code that was written in the book. So here's the HTML, um, here's the dependency definition, and here's the attachment of those dependencies to the HTML element. Um, here they used normalized path. Um, so the the content, the, the the app had a, a directory called assets that contains all the all of these things. Uh, whereas in my version, I've put those assets into inst slash assets. Um, now what's going on here is it's um, if I do. Normalize path of say the what directories have I got in here of the man directory for this package on a Linux machine at least I don't know probably look different on Windows um, it gives me the full path to this directory so this is specified relative to the working directory 
here it's specified as a full kind of the, the, the fully specified path um so in the book what they're doing is to ensure that you can um make those downloaded dependencies and the style sheet and things available you are defining um the path to where they those assets sit on your computer quite explicitly um and then attaching them from that directory whereas in here we're specifying in in the package we're specifying the location relative to um the you know as, as a relative path within a package um right anyway right uh what am i doing okay oh yeah and also although we've attached those dependencies if you actually like run the content it, if you if you run the function in its current form the output function all it will do is create a, a little html you know something that looks like plain text html it doesn't specify the dependencies in here um those will get injected into the head of the app when you um run the you know the ui code and whatnot um so you don't see them even though they're specified in the output function um, um the other side of shiny um outputs is this render function um so for each output that you call in your ui you will have a render function in your server and a, you know a call to a render function in your server and what that does is it creates a kind of um it it's a a, a function that will get called each time the you know the 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 any reactives that it depends upon are, are changed and things like that and it will create all the necessary kind of data structures and content and stuff that will be transferred over to the browser to be attached to the ui elements defined by these output functions um yeah um okay so so these render functions in shiny they accept an expression so in these curly braces we've got a little expression here which takes a data set um takes the top six lines of it and then creates a plot and if you copy that uh code well if you run this code at least in an r session um you'll see that it returns a function. So it accepts an expression, da, 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 and it returns a function. Um, and yeah, so if you look at this, look at the class of whatever's returned by that, it tells you that it's a function, it's a shiny render function, blah, 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 and it's called render plot. Um, the function that shiny uses to convert those expressions and you know um, uh, and the environment within which they are supposed to be evaluated into a kind of um, uh, to, to convert that expression into a function shiny has something called expression to function so if we copy that code over here it um, converts your expression into a function that can then be evaluated. So if I do S and then call S in the calculus. <laughs> we'll try again. So um yeah so that's converted 
that expression into a function. I've got the function that I've, I've, I've stored the function returned by that, and then I can evaluate that on its own, and it will create this plot for me. Um, okay. Um, so, um, so our render functions that we're defining for the shiny output that we're trying to make ought to also return a function. Um, and the example that is given in the book looks like this. So it's render boxy is some function of an expression. And um, so you, you pass in an expression. It works out what environment you were in when that expression was um, constructed. defines a function um, that can be evaluated to, to get the relevant values. And then it returns a function whereby that is evaluated. Now, I was looking at this and thinking, that just seems really strange to me. So you're defining a function, and then you're wrapping that in an anonymous function where that, fun where, you know, the, so you're defining function one, then you're defining a second anonymous function that calls function one. And like, I don't know, I mean, I was looking at this and I was thinking, couldn't you, couldn't you just return this? But I'd, maybe I don't, maybe there's a subtlety that I haven't seen in this book, uh, in this part of the book. Um, so, um, so that's that. So this will return a function every time the, the 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 relevant data and stuff like that gets changed. This function will be um, rerun, and something similar happens with the um, the render value method in the JavaScript file for an HTML widget. If you call that widget from Shiny every time the data that's passed into it changes, um, that render value, uh, yeah, the render value method will be reevaluated. Um, at least that's <laughs> something I've <laughs> worked out over the past couple of weeks. Um, um, so similarly, this render thing will, the, you know, the expression within it will reevaluate each time. Um, Right, so we can look at the render functions for a few different functions. Um, so we can look at the, the version that HTML widgets gives you as a, a template. If I copy that in here. So this is from the high charter library. The render function looks like this. So you've got shiny render widget expression blah 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 um and that's almost identical to to what um was re was put in place in the gio package that i was building um so that function shiny render widget if you look at it takes an expression and um, and a couple of other things in environment and whatnot. Um, so it's taking in the same kind of values as uh, uh, the render function that we're writing in the book notes. Um, so this render function here accepts an expression in an environment. Um, so if we have a look at that, the the definition of that function in HTML widgets. Um, where are we? It here shiny render widget blah 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 blah. Then there's a function here called create render function, um, which takes 
the well, how does it work again? Um, sorry, I, I kind of had to think about this the other night. Now I'm lost again. Um, yeah. So, um, so yes, yeah, so there is this function create render function provided by Shiny, and and since that exists, I was wondering why why the book is recommending to define. I mean, admittedly, the the code looks simpler, uh, you know, in its two different forms than the equivalent within HTML widgets. But if this function exists within Shiny, shouldn't we be using that to create a render function? Um, and I just can't find like I can't I can't make sense of the documentation for it at all. Um, so anyway. So there is a, a tool provided by Shiny that will help you define a render function, um, but I can't make sense of its documentation. So I don't know whether to use it at the moment. Um, if I um, get check render box to fill in that, now I've got this render function as well. Um, now, um, so I've now got um if we look at the um, where was it again the was it in a workings yeah so we're trying to piece together an app that looks like this where we have um um a function that sets up the, the the R data that will be used to create a one of these boxes, a function that will be called whenever that data changes that will create any um, kind of any values that need to be sent over to the browser, and we've got a function here that creates the HTML skeleton into which the values returned by this are kind of attached or injected or whatever you'd call it. Um, but we don't have a working app yet. So if I take the app that we wrote here, um, I'll load all, and I run this. Uh, it will just die. Oop. Expression function. Oh, it dies for a different reason. Um, so it would be. Is there a default value missing for a quoted? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it's false in the book, right? Ah, oh, yes. Here, yeah, sorry, I hadn't put it into the. Um, the right. Let's try that again. So we've got <laughs> a little box here, but it's not quite doing anything. Uh, no, I'll not look at it. I'll look at it. And if we inspect this, then we have added um, a country's class boxy, which is this div here, and a couple of empty things. So what we don't have at the moment is a way to take the values that are returned when oh, the values that are returned when this function is evaluated, we don't have a way of linking those and injecting them into the DOM for this app at the moment. And the next section of the book kind of explains how to do that. Um, so I'll show you, I, I, which I genuinely don't have time to go through today. Um, 
which is good, really, be, because this is this section of the, the chapter is the really complicated stuff, and they just don't have time to do it today, so we're going to do it next week. Um, but yeah, it's so if, effectively, you kind of you define an output binding. So this is it says custom.js, but it's actually the binding .js that's referred to elsewhere in the chapter. So this is where we're going to define the JavaScript code where the values computed by that render function are pushed into the DOM. Um, and in order to do that, you need to define um, to sorry. So this boxy binding thing here is like a a, a class provided by the, the shiny JavaScript library. You're going to extend that with a few methods um, that tell it how to find the appropriate elements on the page and how to inject the values into that once they've been found. Um, and then, um, yeah. So there's quite a bit of content about registering various stuff and how you then use it. So this is the app that they work towards. Um, what you don't see here is the JavaScript code from earlier in this subsection. Um, um, so the, the boxy function is as written in my package. The output function is almost identical to the one that I've written in the package, except for this path variables are um, rather than using absolute paths. I've used, you know, paths within the package that I'm defining. And this render function here is identical to the version that I've got in the package as well. Um, the app code's really simple. So there's just a few different output things created, and there's a few different render functions called. So really, the complications in that JavaScript stuff that I've been skirting around talking about, <laughs> we're going to talk about that next week because it's stretching my the levels of my JavaScript knowledge. Um, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I would have liked to have been able to get through the whole chapter in a single week, but it was too much content for, for that. I hope that's fine. Um, but I hate to leave you on the, you know, just getting to the most exciting bit of the chapter. Um, anyway, yes, so next week we're going to talk about um, um, the, the kind of dependency stuff and how you bind the stuff that R sends over the wires to the browser, how you bind that to the UI elements that Shiny sets up. Um, Lucio has a question, I think. Yeah, it was more like a comment. Okay. About, about why the author did not use the great, well, the Shiny's great render function. May I share my screen? Yeah, 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 of course. Hold on, I'll stop. Yeah. Okay, so for example, in the in the last section of such chapter, uh, the author proposes that some dependency for the for this output should be added conditionally, depending on on this parameter in Boxy, right? If he wants the the box to have an animation or or not, right? So. Yeah. I think he, he doesn't use that function because, for example, when he defines manually the render function for Boxy, uh, he, has, uh, he has this condition, right, that if, the, if one wants the animation for the output, that some dependency is added, right, the count-up.js library. If not, only the, the binding JS that we are defining. Um, if we were to do uh, the same, right, for this render function using such shiny function, uh, create render, create render function. I think the code will, would be like a little bit longer because if we go to the, the documentation of this 
a great render function. It, yeah. seems, it seems that whenever the, the data, right, that is being read as a list, but then we, it will be serialized into a JSON object uh, for JavaScript to take care of, mm -hmm. which is in, in this variable func. Uh, it seems to me that such data, it, it is directly passed into this shiny function. And then the transformation, that is what one wants to happen, occurs in this later parameter. So if we were to add right this condition, if animation, if we want an animation of, or not, we would have to check right over here uh, for func uh, for for this func for this for these arguments passed to the render function. If there is an animation, we we'll have to add this over here, and then call this function with with appropriate dependencies. And if not, then call again this function with the ah, yeah, appropriate okay. dependencies. So, so maybe he does it in order to not yeah, yeah, yeah. use it twice. All yeah, right, that's cool. Yeah, sorry, I didn't. Um, sorry, I, 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 that's interesting. I didn't know that, but um, yeah, okay. Yes, um, I, I think it is quite interesting though, the way that the um, the, the way that you suggest to handle the dependencies in this in the section that you're talking about, um, because I, I must admit I kind of strive to avoid. <laughs> writing anything, anything complicated. <laughs> um, but yeah, so here, so it's like, um, rather than making every dependency, uh, rather than transforming every dependency into the app, you are um, conditionally transferring a dependency dependent on um a, a specific value that that might change during the lifetime of the app um, yeah it's quite neat um right yeah um yes so the the kind of overall theme um of this hold on am i in the right yeah so what is it we're trying to do here we're trying to explain what the uh, what i've tried to do this week is to try and explain what these the render functions and the output functions do and show how to define a custom render function and output function and i'll admit that my understanding of how to construct a render function may not be um great at the moment but um yeah so what we're going to do next week is work out how to bind values that are derived from R to elements of the DOM um, and uh, follow up on the thing that Lucy always just talked about, about the kind of conditionally loading dependencies. Um, yeah, cool. Um, does anyone have any um, other questions or comments or anything? Good on my side. Okay, cool. Ryan, you've been very quiet tonight. Uh, well, this morning, I, uh, whatever it is for you. No, you're good. I uh, I was trying to to not uh, inject uh, to to get through the material. No, I, I I was sharing a side conversation with Arthur. Um, in a lot of the tech writing world that I live in, um, I'm writing a lot of static web pages, static content. Now we render it in these different various libraries. And the example I've always used is this reveal JS, or if you want to use, you know, an e-learning platform and it's the adapt framework. Well, my, my point is to Arthur or what I was expressing is, is I'm having an epiphany that we're using the shiny library within the R studio environment to generate uh, or link data that we are manipulating to this web browser. And I know that that's extremely naive and, and actually at the core of what Shiny's purpose is, but the method or author, John Cohen of the, of the JavaScript for R, 
the intent is you're now dynamically generating this output. So your 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 actual page, right? This 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 HTML page is refreshing, dependent on the values we're providing it. And my comparison to this would be a content management system or a CMS. Um, there's plenty of examples of those in the world, um, but as your data is changing, as you're manipulating it or requesting input from your user, the DOM itself is also changing as well. So I. I I started to think about this in one of the lines of text where you're concatenating, uh, taking a prefix and a suffix, putting it together, and then now you've got an object ID, um, or if you're talking about the normalized path and, and actually where all of your data stores. I'm trying to think in the differences between the shiny world of terms versus web development frame of terms, and then how those two are linked together. At any rate. Okay, cool. Um, right, so um, I think we might call it for this week, if if that's okay. Um, um, so in next week, I'll be talking. In two weeks, Arthur, are you still happy to do the next chapter? Yeah. Yeah, happy to. Mm -hmm. The custom uh, inputs. Mm, yeah, cool, cool. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I won't be able to be here on the 27th of September, but uh, so that's three weeks away, but um, I'm sure you're quite capable of hosting it for yourself for a week. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like hosting a data science meetup now every few months. Um, so anyway, right. Anyway, lovely to see you all as ever. I'll leave you to your days. And uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye bye. See you.